today I'm going to share with you three cases of misplaced lines. Before you can really understand misplaced lines, you have to have a good idea of where normal structures like the veins should run, where they connect, as well as where the position you should see of the esophagus and other structures. So we're going to begin with this first case where a peripherally inserted line, a pick line, has been placed and it should have its tip in the superior vena cava. So here is the line, it's on the right hand side. Here is the subclavian vein. And we can see that the line, instead of turning downwards and into the superior vena cava, has headed cephalab. So where is this line? It's actually gone up into the internal jugular vein. So if we think about it, here's a subclavian vein, it should meet up with the internal jugular vein, and that forms a brachiocephalic vein. That then continues to form the superior vena cava when it meets the left brachiocephalic vein. This idea of how the veins hook up by indirection, by knowing where it is on the chest x-ray, is really key. So this is a misplaced pick line. The tip of the pick line should be in the superior vena cava, anywhere between here, the confluence of the brachiocephalic veins, and the cavoatrial junction. Here's the right atrium, and this is where the superior vena cava meets the right atrium. Here's another case of a patient who has a properly inserted internal jugular catheter. So here's the internal jugular vein, and it continues down, and its tip is in the superior vena cava, just above the caval atrial junction. Do you see the misplaced tube? Well, they tried to put in a nasogastric tube. The tip, is a, the tube should continue all the way down and into the fundus of the stomach. We can see here that it's actually become coiled in the proximal esophagus and pharynx. So you'd rather not feed a patient through this tube. So every time you've placed a line or a tube, you need to confirm its location. So here is the last case we're going to show. Here we can see that there is a nasogastric tube, and that is correctly positioned. It's frequently hard to see the tube in the midport portion, but it's easy to see it up in the neck, and we confirm its end position in the stomach. But in this patient, who has severe pulmonary edema and florid alveolar consolidation requiring intubation, we can see that the tube has slipped down into the right main stem bronchus. Before we can know this, we really need to be able to assess where the carina is. The carina is where the trachea splits into the right and main stem bronchi. Sometimes it's hard to see, but if we know where to look, we should generally be able to find it. First, we can identify this as the aortic knob, and it's usually just below that level and to the right. So we can suggest that this is the carina and the tube is in the right main stem bronchus. Occasionally, this results in collapse of the left lung. The tube tends to slip into the right main stem bronchus because it's more vertically oriented than is the bronchus on the left. In this patient, you can see that it hasn't resulted in collapse. There's no shift of the mediastinum or collapse, but this tube does need to be repositioned. We can measure the distance from the tip of the tube to a satisfactory placement a few centimeters of the, above the carina up to about the thoracic inlet. So I've shared with you three cases of misplaced tubes, a right main stem intubation, a coiled nasogastric tube, and a misdirected catheter that is going up into the internal jugular vein.